Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, welcome back. Uh, yesterday we have seen the the uh, kind of stereo electronic uh, requirements uh, that are imposed in some reactions, especially substitution, elimination, and um, rearrangement. And we have seen that there are the stereo electronic requirements actually, and along with conformation uh, that uh, dictates the major product formation. Okay. Now, let us go into another uh, important, very important topic now, uh, stereo selective and stereo specific reactions. Okay. Along with that, we will also discuss the asymmetric synthesis. Now, suppose you have two compounds, two isomers A and B, these are stereo isomers. And if there is a possibility of formation of C and D from the stereo isomer A and the relationship between C and D are also stereo isomers, and suppose the same C and D can also be obtained from B. So, what are we are talking about that we have taken to enantium to stereo isomers A and B and we are doing some reaction on these two compounds and suppose the possibility of product formation is, uh, is designated as C and D as the products. So, if there is a possibility of uh, C or D or both C and D formation from A and the same thing also happened from B. So, basically the two stereo isomers can give rise to the same set of stereo isomeric products. Now, what can happen in many cases, suppose A only gives C and B only gives D. Okay. Then that reaction that means once set of once one set of stereo isomers is uh, is gone in the product. So, only one major stereo isomeric product is obtained A going to C and not D and B also is going to D uh, or B can also go to C. So, the lot of possibilities suppose C is the only product only product from A or that means out of the two diastereo isomers here the stereo isomers. Uh, you have only one of them is formed on the reaction when the reaction was carried out on E. So, this reaction will be individually called a stereo selective reactions because out of the uh, stereo isomeric products that are possible only one you are only one is obtained that one can be in uh, in a meso form or it could be an optically active pair both are possible. Okay. We will we'll discuss examples, this point will be clear. So, basic definition is that whenever a reaction is done on an isomer A and then if there is possibility of formation of more stereo isomers and if only one stereo isomer is obtained in the product, then that reaction is called a stereo selective reaction. So, it could be C is the only product or D is the only product, both are possible, but in both the cases the reaction is stereo selective. Similarly, if B gives C or B gives D only one not both, then the reaction is also individually stereo selective for with respect to B that means B is undergoing a stereo selective reactions. Okay. So, I hope this is clear that means if I take one compound and from that compound if there is a possibility of generation of different products 
different streams the products are related by stereo isomerism and if only one uh, product is obtained and not the other then that is called a stereo selective reactions. Okay. Now, actually in the uh, organic chemistry books these terms are frequently used in place of one another. Uh, however, uh, what I am talking is the strict definition of a stereo selective reaction. Now, suppose what happens that if B see A and B are stereo isomers and suppose A gives C and B gives D. If A gives C and B gives D that means, the reaction are individually stereo selective because only one set product is obtained. Uh, the other important thing is that the product formation is dependent on the stereochemistry of the starting material because now these are two stereo isomers. So, depending on which isomer you are taking that will decide which product is being formed. So, A giving C and B giving D and relationship between these two are stereo isomers and relationship between these two are stereo isomers also. So, what I am saying that means, the, the stereo isomer that is obtained from the reaction of A is different from the from the uh, is different from the stereo isomer that is D here obtained from B. That means, your product formation is dependent on the geometry of the starting compounds. If that happens, then that is called a stereo specific reaction. So, stereo specific reaction points out to the stereo chemistry of the starting materials, because the product formation depends on the what is the stereo chemistry or the geometry of the starting material. On the other hand, stereo selectivity is dependent on which uh, dependent on just the number of products that you are getting in the reaction. So, if one product is obtained, the reaction becomes stereo selective. Now, I give you one example. Suppose I take cis. 2 methyl butene and if I add bromine onto this say I take bromine in carbon tetrachloride I know the bromines bromine atoms add and the bromine atoms add in a trans in a trans manner right in a, an, an anti manner ok I can write. That means, one bromine if it comes from the top then the other bromine comes from the bottom ok and that is because of the formation of a cyclic bromonium ion. Okay. Now, if that be the case, so the product that you will be getting is, so one is this, when the bromine approaches from this side and the other bromine approaches from the other side. So, you get this compound plus you will get the other compound, the other possibility, the Br coming from this side and the other Br coming from the other side. Okay, so, you get Br here and you get methyl, you get hydrogen and then you get Br on this side and then CH 3 and this H. Now, these two are racemic mixtures, they are optically active, but both the compounds are formed in 1 is to 1 uh, amount. Okay. Now, there is a third possibility, the third possible compounds with this formula is the meso compound where which has a plane of symmetry that we know. This is the meso, but what is obtained in this addition trans addition of bromine that you get only these two. Okay. So, these two are one enantiomeric pair. So, you get one enantiomeric pair and not the meso compound. Okay. So, this reaction is stereo selective. Remember stereo selectivity does not discriminate between the, the extent of the enantiomers. Even if you get plus minus 1 is to 1, the reaction is stereo selective. That means, this is considered as a as one set one set and this is the other one, the other 
set, but here it is not set because it is a meso compound. So, it is exists only in one, uh, one isomer. However, if you get either this or this the reaction becomes stereoselective. So, here you are getting only this compound. So, it is stereoselective. Now, if you take the trans compound the trans alkene sorry the trans alkene then what will happen after bromine addition if the bromine adds from this side or that side. So, you are I erase this actually that is not the way to write uh, you will get a compound which will have a center of symmetry now. So, one bromine comes from here another bromine comes from the other side and now you have a center and I present in the compound. Okay. So, it got it ha has an I. Okay. It also has a plane of symmetry, but not in this conformation in the eclipse fully eclipse conformation you get the plane of symmetry. So, it has got I. Uh, so, this is now you are not getting the d l pair you are not getting the d l pair. So, that is not obtained. So, what you get is the meso I am not doing the other other side of addition because that gives the same product. Okay. Now, you can have a very uh, see which product which will give which product is depend is a there is a mnemonic mnemonic device you can apply that because the bromine adding opposite that means that that will have a that will bring a I at this point, but this molecule does not have I. So, what happens it has sigma. So, if the bromines add from the same side the sigma is retained, but the bromine is adding from the opposite side. So, the sigma is disrupted. So, that is why you get enantiomeric pair here already I is present and bromines are adding in a in a center of symmetric fashion. So, it will the I will be maintained will be retained and you get the meso compound. So, this is what is stereo both the individual reactions are stereo selective and overall reaction bromine addition to uh, alkene is stereo specific also because the product depends the product geometry depends on the geometry of the starting material okay, that is clear. Now, let us take an example if we do the same reaction with cyclohexene. See, I am talking about the very, uh, very see if you are very pure stereochemist, then this is what is followed. Uh, uh, that means this these terms have to be followed very, very seriously, very rigorously. Uh, like when you say that bromine addition to cis or trans to butene is stereo selective as well as stereo specific. Okay, but that is only meant for the butene system. If you take the cyclohexene system, the bromines will add from the opposite sides. So, you get bromine here, hydrogen there, bromine here, hydrogen there because they will be adding in a trans fashion. Now, this is the this is one product and you get the other product because this is now optically active. So, hydrogen bromine bromine hydrogen. So, this d l pair you will obtain. Okay. Now, what was the other possible product? The other possible product was the meso. But this is not obtained. So, this is not obtained only one pair enantiomeric pair is obtained. So, the reaction is stereo selective. Now, the question is if the reaction if the, the question is asked that is this reaction stereo specific. Now, to know that answer you have to make the other isomer of cyclohexene this is the cis double bond. So, you have to make the other isomer of cyclohexene and do the same reaction and see which product is obtained that means, you have to make the transform of the transform of like this, but this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 this does not exist this is this is sterically not accessible does not exist. Why it does not exist? Because you cannot introduce a trans double bond and make a six membered ring. See 
basically these are the four carbon atoms already gone and if you want to make the trans compound. So, then you have only two more carbons and this is not possible to add like this. So, you need later on you will be knowing this or you should know this that it needs eight total eight carbons that means four carbons more to introduce a, a trans double bond in a cycler in a cyclic ring. So, trans octene is the first one. Of course, this does not exist in this form, this has a special geometry and this is optically active, but just to know that trans double bond exists only uh, when n, n is the number of uh, carbon atoms in the ring when n is equal to 8 greater than or equals to 8, okay. then you can introduce the trans double bond. So, this compound does not exist, so you will not be able to do this bromine addition onto this and see what happens, this is not possible, nobody has done that and nobody could do that because this does not exist. So, now according to the strict definition of stereo specific reaction you cannot say that this reaction is stereo specific okay. because simply to know the stereo specificity you have to take both the isomers both the substrates and do the reaction and one substrate should give one product another substrate should give another product then it is stereo specific. It is the reaction is stereo selective because there is no problem because out of this this is pair dl pair and this is the meso you are not getting the meso you are getting only this diastereomeric pair. So, this reaction is stereo selective ok. Next is the question of asymmetry ok asymmetric synthesis what is asymmetric synthesis? in true sense. See as I said all these terminologies have been quite misused in the organic chemistry textbooks, okay. but uh, what I am telling today is the actual meaning of these terms, but later on we, can, we may also uh, as you go along uh, the terms can interchange with each other uh, like the other the, like the books are doing, but it is better to know the exact meaning of this and try to avoid uh, those type of complications by using randomly one over the other okay. that should not be done. Now, what is asymmetric synthesis? Asymmetric synthesis is if you take a molecule and if you have a pro stereogenic center, pro stereogenic center means uh, or, or if you just do not forget uh, tell about pro stereogenic center, if you have a molecule where there is a carbon suppose a carbon is there and if you want to convert this carbon it was symmetric carbon. symmetric carbon and you want to make it asymmetric. If you want to convert it into an asymmetric carbon, so a symmetric carbon is converted or an achiral center I can say an achiral center is converted into a chiral center or the modern terminology is a stereogenic center. Now, when you make this chiral center. So, there is a possibility of formation of R and S configuration ok both and usually both are formed in 50 50 that is what is expected, but if you can do it in such a way that only one of these uh, is the sole product or could be the major product then that reaction will be called an asymmetric synthesis. So, what I am saying again that if you convert an achiral carbon into a chiral carbon and if you get only one configuration as the major one or even possibly 100 percent then that reaction will be called the reaction that you have taken help to do that will be called an asymmetric reaction ok will be called an asymmetric reaction and if it is a part of a synthetic uh, protocol that is called an asymmetric synthesis ok. Uh, now, the there is a thing of degree of asymmetry as I said that you can get 100 percent of this almost 100 percent or you can get 90 percent of this 10 percent of this. Okay. So, there is a uh, thing that is called degree of asymmetry which is expressed in terms of it is expressed in terms of you remember I gave you uh, what is called enantiomeric excess or optical purity of a molecule 
that optical purity or enantiomeric excess will tell you or even diastereomeric excess if, if they happen to be diastereomers in this case enantiomers, but there are cases where the product can be diastereomers. So, that diastereomeric excess or the enantiomeric excess or the optical purity will tell you about the extent of asymmetry that you have achieved during your reaction. Okay. Now, the question is how can you achieve how can you achieve this type of asymmetric synthesis? Suppose I take a carbonyl compound. Okay. Suppose there is a methyl, suppose these two groups are different R1 and R2. Okay. Now, I have told you earlier that whenever you have this better way is right that the carbonyl carbon is in the plane of the board, then these two carbons one will be. So, this is vertically placed. So, uh, the R1, uh, this is vertical to the double bond, uh, to the uh, to the to the board. So that is placed along this line. The carbon oxygen is in the plane of the board, but this R1 and R2, they are one is going this way and the other is going in the back side. Okay. So R1, R2, and this carbon and oxygen that makes a vertical plane. But with the carbonyl is in the plane of the board. Okay. If it is placed in that way. Now, what happens? I know that carbonyls are susceptible to nucleophilic addition. Okay. So, suppose I add a nucleophile. Now, whenever I place the carbonyl, now we have two faces of the carbonyl. The nucleophile can approach from this side or the nucleophile can approach from this side. Okay. Now, what are these sides? How do you define these sides? We have seen the ray and the psi phase. First of all, these these phases are these phases are either enantiotropic or diastereotropic depend on what type of products you ultimately get there. Okay. If you end up uh, getting enantiomers, then that will be there will be enantiotropic phases. Suppose these two are not a or not chiral, they are a chiral groups. Okay. Suppose these two groups are a chiral groups, say take an example suppose methyl this is methyl and this is ethyl. Okay. Now, the top group you know how to number this the top group is uh, the top phase is now 1 if you do the preference uh, the, the priority sequence this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3. So, if you see from the top so 1 then 1 then 2 and then 3. So, that means it is going in a clockwise direction. So, this is a this is a ray phase. Okay. This is a ray phase and if you do the op, if you check this one. So, this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. So, now it is going in an anti clockwise direction. So, this will be psi phase that we have done earlier. right? This is ray phase and that is psi phase. So, if the nucleophile approaches from the ray phase, then the product will be C two H five carbon, and this will be O H, and uh, sorry, now the nucleophile will be on this side, and O H will be on that side. Okay, and if the this is the ray phase approach, and if it is from the psi phase, then the product will be this is O H, this is nucleophile, and this is methyl, and this is your ethyl. So, what is the relationship between these two? They are mirror images, okay. they are enantiomeric pairs that is why I call this as enantiotopic phases. Okay. Now, the transition state transition state uh, that is involved when the attack takes from the ray phase you can depict it as without much uh, deformation you can say that the carbonyl oxygen has broken to some extent and this is the C 2 H 5, this is the nucleophile. So, that is forming a bond half bond. So, this is the transition state. Okay. So, that will be delta minus and if it is approaching from the psi phase the transition state will be
so C two H five, and now the nucleophile will be from uh, nucleophile will be from this side. Okay, the nucleophile actually approaches. The nucleophile actually approaches at an angle of about 107 degree. This is what is called Bergi Dunij trajectory. So, whenever uh, something attacks to a carbonyl, see this is a carbonyl carbon, this is a carbonyl carbon, suppose this is oxygen. So, the nucleophile does not approach at perpendicular direction, it approaches at an angle of about 107 degree, it's close to the angle of an sp 3 carbon. Uh, remember that this carbon after the addition will become an sp 3. So, it is close to that sp 3 carbon. So, this trajectory is called Bergi Dunij trajectory and the ca ca angle is calculated to be around 107 degrees. So, that is why I make it slightly slant in that sense 107 degree. Now, the important thing is that these two are now mirror images, these two are now mirror images. So, energetically they are same, so same energy, so same energy. So, if you do this type of reaction where the transition states are enantiomeric, that means you start from the carbonyl that is your carbonyl compound that is the ethyl methyl ketone that we have started and what you are getting two products. So, one product is suppose this is the R compound and this is the S compound, but the problem is actually both S and R will have the same energy, but here the problem is the transition states and this is the transition state, this is transition state for R compound formation, transition state for S compound formation, these transition states are enantiomeric. If that is the case, that means they have same energy and if that be the case, this is your substrate that means the starting ketone. So, the activation energy for the formation of the R compound is the same as the activation energy for the formation of the. So, this is the delta E, this is delta E, they are same. So, delta E R and delta, so this is delta E R and this is delta E S, make a star, maybe a hash. So, these two are same. So, if these two are same, then the rate of formation of R will be equal to rate of formation of S and that means, your R and S will be produced in equal amount. So, R by S will be dependent on rate of formation of R is and that will be equal to rate of formation of S, because both have the same activation energy. Okay. So, this is asymmetric synthesis, because what is asymmetric synthesis? If you can make one of these as the major product, then that becomes an asymmetric synthesis. Okay. But this way you cannot achieve this, if the transition states are enantiomeric, then you cannot achieve asymmetric synthesis. So, you have to introduce diastereo, diastereomeric relationship between the transition states in order to achieve an asymmetric synthesis. So, that is the principle of asymmetric synthesis. That when you consider the transition states, the transition states cannot be enantiomeric. So, they have to be diastereomeric and you know the diastereomers have different energy. Okay. Diastereomers are not mirror images, they, that is why they are called diastereomers and they have different energy levels. And if they have different energy levels, then the activation barrier changes for the formation of both the compounds and then there is a possibility of formation of uh, one compound over the other, one configuration over the other. So, that is the principle of asymmetric synthesis. That means, whatever you do, you have to make these transition states differ in energy, okay. differ in energy. Suppose, this will be bigger and this will be smaller. Now, the question is how do you do it. Okay. So, this is what is then this will not be equal to this will not be equal to this and if that is not equal to this, in this is not equal to 1 is to 1. So, you have an asymmetric synthesis. The question is what is the degree of asymmetry that depends on the type of reaction that you are doing. Okay. So, the to achieve asymmetric synthesis, the transition states, the rule of 
thumb which is the transition states should be diastereomeric okay then only you can have an asymmetric synthesis because then only the rate of formation of one compound over the other will be different okay so in the next lecture we will consider how to achieve asymmetric synthesis will with some examples and then how to predict which compound or which diastereomer or which isomer is obtained in major amount over the other. There are certain rules which governs the uh, which can predict the configuration of the major configuration, but that will be in the next lecture. Thank you.